Basil here of Basil's Garage. Um, we're here at our shop in San Diego, California, and today we're gonna do a walk around video on our shop truck. It's a 2005 Toyota Tundra. The truck has been built not to be a rock crawler. It's not a go fast desert running truck. Its real purpose is to go on surf trips in Mexico. We really wanted it to be able to handle just hundreds of miles of really, really rough washboard roads and be able to kind of carry a constant speed through those washboard roads. Um, so everything's been really heavily reinforced throughout the frame and the suspension and everything. We can kind of go through that later. The truck started off as a Tundra. There's not really much Tundra left in it. Really the only thing left that's been untouched has been the engine, transmission, and the cab of the truck. Pretty much everything else has been changed or modified in some way. Had the truck about two years. Right now it's sitting with about 130, 135,000 miles on it. Um, yeah, we're gonna start off the video with just kind of going through the truck side accessories. And then from, from there, we'll go into the drive line, suspension, all that other stuff underneath it. Um, and then into the camp setup, the Mitz Alloy, GFC, all the cool stuff on the back. On the front of the truck, there is a A or B bumper. It's kind of a theme with this truck. Nothing's really made for it. Quirk with the first 10 Tundras is there's not a ton of parts available for them. Um, so this bumper is actually made for a second generation Toyota Tacoma. So it's an A or B bumper. Uh, on top of the bumper, there are a set of A or B intensity V2 lights. In the fog pockets are a set of Baja Design squadrons. They're the SAE ones, so they're road legal. And then inside of the bumper, there is a Warren 10,000 pound winch with a master pull synthetic winch line. Over here, this is a Alamosa antenna. Uh, it's a dual band ham radio antenna. Um, we also have a winch disconnect on the top of the bumper so you can uh, disengage and engage the electronic side of the winch. Over here, this is a 100 series Land Cruiser snorkel with a Sentry pre-cleaner on top of it. Up top, there is a Rhino rack that's been shortened slightly to make clearance for the GFC rooftop tent. Um, this has custom backbones, I guess, if you want to call it that, um, to mount it to the first gen Tundra. On the front of the rack, there is a 40 inch Baja Designs Onyx 6 Plus light bar. Um, it's got the driving combo lenses on the front of it. Um, all the lighting on the front of the truck, we carry amber covers to snap on top of it. We like using white lights here at the shop because you can always put an amber cover on top of it. If you have amber lights, you can't put a white cover on top of it. So it gives you a little bit more versatility with the lights. Wheel and tire package on this truck is a set of BF Goodrich KM3s. They're a 35, 12, 5, 17. The wheels are a set of custom made braid wheels. They're custom because we had to go a little bit different on the hub bore size. Uh, there's a Dana 60 underneath the rear of the truck. So it's standard Toyota six bolt lug pattern, but the hub bore, which is the center opening in the wheel has been opened up to 108 millimeters. Um, they're a 17 by seven and a half inch wheel with their beadlock B system. So it's a little bit of a mix in between a traditional beadlock, which is like the ring that goes on the outside of it and like a, a bead grip technology. There's fasteners that run into the side of the bead of the tire and kind of help hold it into place. Um, it's not approved, so you can use it on the road here in the States, which is pretty cool. Also in the wheels is a set of Apex Performance Rapid Air Down Valve Stems. So you can pull the plug on those things and they'll drop the pressure down in a couple seconds from 30 to 15. All right, so the underhood on this truck, not much has been modified like engine wise. It actually runs OEM Toyota oil filters and air filters. Um, but underneath the hood is most of the electronics that kind of run the truck side. The dual battery system underneath the hood is made by a good buddy of mine, Matt, in Colorado uh, with off-grid 4x4 and off-grid engineering. So there's twin AGM batteries underneath the hood. 
The secondary battery is charged with a Red Arc DC to DC charger. It's their BC DC 1225, so the 25 amp DC to DC charger. There's also a Switch Pros 9100, so the eight circuit Switch Pros in here, a 270 amp alternator to be able to charge this battery bank and the even bigger one back there. And then there's also a Red Arc SBI isolator, so you can self jumpstart yourself off of the secondary battery. We'll get into the braking later. The underside, underhood side of the braking, um, the master cylinder and the brake booster have been switched out for T100 parts. Um, so it's a slightly larger master cylinder size to accommodate for the bigger brakes front and rear. So on the inside of the truck, uh, we'll start down here. There is a Red Arc Tow Pro trailer brake controller over here. Also a switch right here that's connecting the two batteries together for self jump starts. Um, up here, there's a scan gauge too. Just gives you basic engine voltage, coolant temperature, that kind of stuff. It's an iPad mini right here. Use it for all of our navigation and music. Backup camera. Next to it, there's a Garmin dash camera. Um, there's a Switch Pros controller. It's right here. And then this is a uh, dual band ham radio. And this is a Red Arc Red Vision screen. Um, this is actually tied into the canopy on the back of the truck. So it lets us turn on and off accessories from in here. Um, really what's most important to turn on and off is the oven. So if you're cooking something in the back, you can turn it on and off. Um, but it also gives you battery status. When you start the truck, it'll tell you how long till it's full, all that kind of good stuff. Down here in the center console, we have a FJ Cruiser transfer case that has a twin stick modification to it. So you have two wheel drive high and low and four wheel drive high and low. So there's two twin sticks coming out of here. In the back of the truck, there is a plywood simple deck system. It has a couple bins below it that we've got full of ratchet straps and some random spare parts. Uh, we keep jack, a little first aid kit, tools, and then my dog sits back here. Um, so it's a little dog bed, and then there's also l tracks running on top of it. Um, you'll see there's an, a lot of l track throughout this whole build, so we love it. It's a quick release mounting system, so you can put these quick release loops in it. Um, lets you kind of strap down whatever you want to, wherever. We'll go through what you can see with it up on the lift. Starting up front, custom made skid plate. Um, my buddy Matt Goldman in Colorado, different Matt, helped me make that guy. The front suspension on this thing is a set of ADS coilovers. These are a two and a half inch shock with a remote reservoir and adjuster. Um, we have a set of SBC upper control arms. There is a set of Solar Motorsports lower control arms in here. They're stock length, so we're factory width on the front end. The cool thing about those lower control arms is first, they're super beefy. Second, they have a one inch lower ball joint push forwards. Um, so pairing those with the SPC upper control arms, you can shift the entire spindle forwards, um, which really helps us clear the 35 inch tall tires. Also up front, uh, there's a set of SBC hydraulic bump stops. These are the one and a half inch travel bump stops. Behind that, there's a set of limit straps. So the front end is both limited in travel up and down, full compression and extension. Pretty much everything on this truck has been gusseted and reinforced. So up front, there is shock tower gussets, spindle gussets, cam tab gussets. The steering rack and steering is pretty much all stock. The front differential on this thing um, is a factory Toyota front differential, but it has 488 gears and an ARB air locker. We also did a set of CVJ high angle CV axles. So it's Toyota steel, but the boots on the inner and outer are a little bit better at the higher angles of a lifted truck. We left it Toyota Steel and didn't go to an upgraded axle because we want those to be the fuse in the front system, in the front drive line. So if you're getting after it and have too much wheel speed on the front end, those will break before you break a front differential. We carry a spare CV in the back drawer just in case that happens. Out here, um, we do have to run wheel spacers, not because we're looking for more width, but because we need to match that hub bore on the rear of the truck. Um, so these wheel spacers are inch and a quarter wide. They're custom made ones by Bora. Uh, inch and a quarter wide, Toyota six lug bolt pattern, but they're 108 millimeter center bore. So it kind of helps locate these wheels better and we don't have any vibrations on the front end. Big red obvious thing on the front of it is the power brake kit. 
So this is an upgraded big brake kit on these trucks. It is a fantastic upgrades. One of the best things I've done to this truck. It really, really helps with stopping power, heat dissipation. It does require 17 inch wheels on the six lug Toyotas. And then if you do them on a five lug Toyota, Tundra, Sequoia, 200 series, require 18 inch wheels. Now we go on to the rear suspension. First off, there is a set of custom made Alcan leaf springs. Um, so these are for three inches of lift and 2,500 pounds over stock. This is a heavy truck. It weighs right now, it sits about 63 to 6,500 pounds, um, but fully loaded for a trip with all the gear in the back, water tanks full, fuel tanks full. We're gonna be up around about 8,000 pounds. Everything's been upgraded to handle that weight and it actually does it really, really well. Design the whole suspension and the whole purpose around the suspension is to be able to go at a reasonable constant speed through really rough roads and not have to worry about breaking anything. There is a anti-rock rear sway bar. Rear shocks are also a pair of two and a half inch ADS uh, shocks, also have remote reservoirs and adjusters. In behind the leaf springs, a set of SPC's three inch travel bump stops. They're a little bit longer travel than the front just because packaging back here is a little bit easier. In behind that is rear limit straps. Bump stops and limit straps are mounted to a additional cross member in the rear that runs above the axle. There is a set of Archive Garage shackle hangers and shackles. Um, these are just a reinforced set of shackle hangers and shackles. It helps get rid of the jitters you get in the rear of the truck as those frame rails flex. So back here is a custom made hitch. The factory one hung down kind of low after we did the tray swap. So this one's a little bit higher clearance and I think just looks a little bit better. Above me, big shiny thing, is a new thing we're installing right now. It's a fuel cell. So it's a 24 gallon auxiliary fuel cell. This truck right now from factory has a 29 gallon fuel tank and this will be 24 gallons of additional fuel capacity. And we're setting it up as a auxiliary transfer tank. So you'll be able to run your factory tank down and then pump this one over into the factory tank. Um, so if you're on a trip and you know you're going to need that additional fuel, you can fill it up, have it there, ready to go. But if you're going somewhere and you don't necessarily need that fuel and that weight, you can leave it empty. Talk about the drive line on the truck. Um, as I said before, engine, transmission, or stock, nothing's really been changed on those. Transfer case behind the transmission is a FJ Cruiser transfer case. So it's a manual transfer case versus the electronic actuated one that was in there from the factory. Behind that is a custom drive shaft. Reason being there's a custom drive shaft is we have a Dana 60 back here. So this is a custom built Dana 60 by East Coast Gear Supply. We ran into issues in the past with blowing up the rear end of this truck. We blew up the rear end of this truck in the middle of nowhere, Mexico, and it was really fun to deal with and get out. We had to find an axle in the junkyard in Mexico and swap it in and it was a whole process. So I decided never to have that issue again and put this thing in. It is a 67 inch wide wheel mounting surface to wheel mounting surface axle. Um, it has three quarter ton disc brakes, 35 spline chromoly axle shafts and full float hubs. So all of the load is carried out on the outer ends on the bearings outside and not by the center section on in it. Inside of it is also 488 gears and an ARB air locker. All of the brake lines from the master cylinder back on the rear end of the truck are braided stainless steel brake lines. Works really well for us. We do have a brake proportioning valve in the center of the truck uh, that helps us kind of adjust the brake bias on it because these big brakes in the back do want to try and lock up. Um, so with that, we're able to adjust the front and rear brake bias on it. This axle is pretty much bulletproof. It's kind of the whole purpose of this truck is everything's overkill, everything's excessive. We don't want to break anything in the middle of anywhere. So the entire frame has been gusseted and boxed in. Um, so we actually just finished up with that a week or so ago. So we stripped the tray and canopy off the back of the truck, cleaned the entire frame out, got rid of any rust. Luckily there wasn't too much. And then boxed the entire frame in with 3 16th steel plate. After it was boxed in, we painted the inside with an internal frame coating, make sure it was all clean, painted well, helped with future rust problems. And yeah, it's a, a fully boxed frame. Now from the front bumper, back to the hitch. All right, so now we'll kind of go on to the back half of the truck. So the big thing, this is a mitts alloy tray, well, tray and canopy. 
This is a product from Australia that we're dealers for here at the shop. What it is, it's pretty much a tray as a flatbed. Um, so everything from this line and this line down and forwards is the tray. Canopy is the storage box that is from this line to this line and from this line to this line. Up front on the tray, there's a 30 liter headboard water tank. You can also see electronics in here. These are charge lines going into the canopy power system, water tank level sensor, relocated fuel neck is here. The trays come with under tray storage boxes. This one, I'm gonna use it for our fluids for the truck. It's got some engine oil, brake fluid, other random odds and ends. Back here, this box is actually just empty. Um, kind of leave it that way, depending on where we're going, what we're carrying, we can put it in here. We have a sand mat that we put in here for camping trips down to Mexico. And the mitts come with flares. Um, these flares suit 35 inch tall tires. They've got ones for 33s, 37s. There's also a set of mud flaps on the back of them. So this package from Mitts is their mid-size truck package. They do trays and canopies for both mid-size and full-size trucks. This tray is 2,050 millimeters long, which is about 6.5 feet long. The canopy is a thousand meters long, or thousand meters, thousand millimeters long. They call it the uh, meter long canopy. It's the half one. So it's pretty much 50% truck bed, 50% canopy. They offer canopies. Uh, this is the shortest one they offer. They do three quarter full length and a couple different variations depending on how long the tray is. This package has their stubby sideboard kit. So it's just the half length sideboards. If you didn't have a canopy and all the other stuff on it, you could get full length sideboards so it run all the way up to the headache rack here and then kind of be like a traditional truck bed or it's a flat bed with drop down sides. These sides have latches, a latch right here. You can spin and drop it down. On the side of the canopies, we've kind of enclosed this back area with a set of custom canvas walls. The reason being is this GFC tent is actually a pass through tent. Um, so we can enter into the back deck area right here and then pass up through, remove these panels out and go into the tent. So we have these canvas walls made. You can unloop them up here, unroll them and zip them down. Um, so that way in bad weather or anything like that, you can kind of have a little space to jump into, change your pants, do whatever you need to do out of the weather and have a little bit of a private zone. On the back of the tray and canopy, Big thing is the twin spare tires. We have two full-size replacement tires on the back of this thing. We like to carry two, just nice peace of mind. Um, it's probably a bit overkill, but it's, it's nice to have. And to be honest, it looks pretty cool too. It's so the Mitz Alloy ladder. Um, so this is a drop-down ladder, swings down, gives you access to the rooftop tent. So if the weather's really nice and you have no need to pass through the truck bed area, you can just climb up, use it as a normal rooftop tent. Up top here, this is the Baja Designs RTL light. Gives us a running light, brake light, and reverse light. My favorite feature of the whole tray is the under tray drawer. Call it the truck bed below the truck bed. So this pulls out and is both a table. We like to cook on the back of this area. And then it's also a massive storage drawer. So this lifts up out of the way. In here, we have a ton of spare parts. We've got a propane cook stove, surf wax, tools, tire patch kit, solar panel. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here, um, but it's kind of just our junk drawer of the truck where we all put, all put all the random gear. Tucks away and pretty much disappears until you're ready to use it. This side of the truck, the under tray boxes. This one has our whole air compressor set up in it. So there's an A or B twin air compressor down here, as well as both the locker solenoids and the manifold. We keep the air hoses, a air chuck, um, and a few other odds and ends in here. On the rear deck of the truck on this side, there is an A or B elements fridge. This is their outdoor rated fridge, so it's good to be out in the environment. It has a keypad passcode to it, which is pretty cool. So if you have the canvas walls rolled up and people can see this thing, you can't get into it unless you know the passcode. It keeps your beer safe. You can turn on the light. So we'll open up this door here. On the back deck area, we have a set of Max Trax Extremes. There's also a Baja Designs S1 light on the front of it, just as like a general cargo light, as well as a few 12 volt inputs, outputs, solar plugs, and a few other things on that back wall up there. A lot of the stuff on the back of the truck has been custom. 
Um, really the only things offered from MITS alloy are gonna be the tray, tray sides, the ladder rack, which is this hoop that runs up and over, the ladder, the actual spare tire mounts, but a lot of the bracketry to be able to do the canvas sidewalls, mounting the tent down, the structure that's actually holding the tires up back here has been custom by us. This side of it, we've built it out kind of just to be storage half. Open storage, put whatever you want. Inside of here, there's a lot of electronics. Um, so this is a pretty big power system. There is a Red Arc Red Vision system. So it's a Manager 30 and the Red Vision, as well as a BC DC 1225. The reason being is we want to be able to charge our battery bank really, really fast while we're out on the road. And we don't have any hard mounted solar on the top of the truck, just because usually the surfboard's on the roof and we didn't really want to rely on it. We have a 300 amp hour lithium battery bank behind this wall. It's actually one single battery. Over here, we have the Red Arc 3000 watt inverter that's powering all of our AC 110 outputs on this side and over on the kitchen side. Um, Milwaukee battery charger, just for some of our tools we carry in the back. On each door, both passenger and driver side, there is a single hardcore light. Um, so these things are dimmable. You can change the colors on them from white to white and amber to full amber. Really great lights, we like them a lot here at the shop. Also on this side, we have our Starlink satellite internet kit. So this is a Starlink kit that's been both converted to 12 volt and flat mount. Um, so inside of the canopy, it's kind of the brains of it. Um, there's the modem, 12 volt conversion pieces. Um, and a few other odds and ends. And then up here on the roof of the truck is the actual Starlink antenna. From here, we can step over onto the kitchen side of the truck. So this side of the truck is the kitchen side of the truck, where we do a lot of our living out of when we're camping. There's a lot going on in here. You can see a little bit more of the electronics here. We have more 110 outlets, a Anderson connector, 12 volt hot outlet, as well as a couple of USB ports and USB-C ports. You can see the Red Vision unit up here. All the wiring in this thing's kind of hidden away and run behind stuff so it looks pretty nice and makes it so you can't catch wires. On the front of the canopy over here, there's both the third Red Vision screen in the truck and the Starlink input, as well as a external solar panel input. Um, we carry a folding blanket solar panel from Red Arc in the back drawer. So when we are parking for a while, we want to fold out a panel, we can fold it out and throw it on the hood or something and plug it in. Up here, this is a 12 volt camp oven. This whole kitchen side is very excessive. That kind of plays in with it. You don't really need any of this stuff. It's cool to have, it's convenient. This thing's awesome though. We've made cookies on the beach in the middle of Mexico. We fresh baked cookies after surfing all day is pretty sweet. Down here, this is our kitchen drawer. Has all of our pots, pans, utensils, Ziploc bags, random stuff. And then down below that, there is a induction cooktop. Um, this thing's great. This is my first truck that I've had that we've built with induction cooktop here. It's great for the quick meals. You don't have to pull out your propane tank, hook up the hoses, all that kind of stuff. It's just throw a pot on it, put water on it, boil rice, boil pasta, cook food, whatever you want to do. It's really quick and easy to set up. You wipe it off, fold it away, and you're done. Um, good for lunches on the side of the road, or if you're just staying somewhere for one night and don't want to do the full setup, it works well. We've also cut our little cactus logo here into the front of this. Um, it's actually to hang trash bags on, so you can hang your trash bags on the front of it. If you're using this as a cutting board, just swipe your scraps into it. Works pretty well. Back here is the pantry. So this is a pantry, holds all of our more pots and pans, or spices, olive oil, hot sauce, all that kind of stuff up there, as well as all of our dry foods. So we've got cans of soup and usually gets full of all sorts of other stuff. Up front on this is a Nespresso machine. Again, like I said, excessive, but really, really convenient. Down below here, store the pods, works pretty well. All of the internals on this truck uh, we built here in house at the shop. MITS offers their own internals as well too, but we want to kind of see what we could do. Seems to be working really well. We, everything's made out of aluminum in here. It's relatively lightweight and has held up well so far. Up top, a little paper towel holder, a light, a couple koozies. It's a nice little kitchen side. Pull out the awning. It comes up and over the door on the canopy as well too, which is convenient. Also on this side of the tray, this is your water outlet. When the tank's full, you can spin this little spigot and water comes out. There's also the water fill. So now, kind of take a look at the sleeping side of this whole setup. 
Up top, there is a Go Fast Campers upper portion of a XL camper. And that's why there's a pass-through. On the side of it, there's an ARB Touring awning and then a pair of beef bars from GFC up top. On the back of it, we access the tent through the ladder. Pull latches out. Hold down the ladder. So this is normally how you would access the tent. Pretty easy. Normally it opens all the way as well too, but we're inside the shop so it doesn't quite open all the way. Um, but the different feature on this one is that it has a pass-through. You can climb in here and then go this way if you want. So this one has the removable panels, just like their camper would. Um, so in bad weather, obviously you'd have this zipped up, but you'd have a small area to kind of change your pants, do whatever, whatever else you need to do. There's a, enough room for two people and a dog pretty comfortably up here. We've got the Shitco awning brackets on the back of it too. So this fly can get pulled out and held up like this. Um, gives you a little bit of shade and rain coverage. That's pretty much it. Um, there's been a ton of stuff done to this truck. There's a lot of time, money, effort put into this thing, but it works really, really well for what I want it to do. It takes me where I want it to go. It's comfortable, runs and drives really well. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm sure we missed stuff. We made a whole list of just all the parts that have been thrown at this thing, um, but there's been so much custom work so many companies involved in this truck um, and it's kind of come all all together really really well here at the shop we can pretty much do everything you've seen on this truck everything from suspensions wheels and tires to lights to trays and canopies to power systems feel free to stop by check out the shop come check out the truck happy to walk you through it we'll be at all the shows this summer and stuff with it so it's pretty much the end i don't know what to say how do you end a video <laughs>